of the exercises of a religious man. The life of a Christian ought to be adorned with all virtues, that he may be inwardly what he outwardly appeareth unto men. And verily it should be yet better within than without, for God is a discerner of our heart, whom we must reverence with all our hearts wheresoever we are, and walk pure in his presence as do the angels. We ought daily to renew our vows, and to kindle our hearts to zeal, as if each day were the first day of our conversion, and to say, Help me, O God, in my good resolutions, and in thy holy service, and grant that this day I may make a good beginning, for hitherto I have done nothing. 2. According to our resolution, so is the rate of our progress, and much diligence is needful for him who would make good progress. For if he who resolveth bravely oftentimes falleth short, how shall it be with him who resolveth rarely or feebly? But manifold causes bring about abandonment of our resolution, yet a trivial omission of holy exercises can hardly be made without some loss to us. The resolution of the righteous dependeth more upon the grace of God than upon their own wisdom, for in him they always put their trust, whatsoever they take in hand. For man proposeth, but God disposeth, and the way of a man is not in himself. 3. If a holy exercise be sometimes omitted for the sake of some act of piety, or of some brotherly kindness, it can easily be taken up afterwards, but if it be neglected through distaste or slothfulness, then it is it sinful, and the mischief will be felt. Strive as earnestly as we may, we shall still fall short in many things. Always should some distinct resolution be made by us, and, most of all, we must strive against those sins which most easily beset us. Both our outer and inner life should be straightly examined and ruled by us, because both have to do with our progress. 4. If thou canst not be always examining thyself, thou canst at certain seasons, and at least twice in the day, at evening and at morning. In the morning make thy resolves, and in the evening inquire into thy life how thou hast sped to-day in word, deed, and thought, for in these ways thou hast often perchance offended God and thy neighbour. Gird up thy loins like a man against the assaults of the devil. Bridle thine appetite, and thou wilt soon be able to bridle every inclination of the flesh. Be thou never without something to do, be reading, or writing, or praying, or meditating, or doing something that is useful to the community. Bodily exercises, however, must be undertaken with discretion, nor are they to be used by all alike. 5. The duties which are not common to all must not be done openly, but are safest carried on in secret. But take heed that thou be not careless in the common duties, and more devout in the secret, but faithfully and honestly discharge the duties and commands which lie upon thee, then afterwards, if thou hast still leisure, give thyself to thyself as thy devotion leadeth thee. All cannot have one exercise, but one suiteth better to this man, and another to that. Even for the diversity of season, different exercises are needed. Some suit better for feasts, some for fasts. We need one kind in time of temptations, and others in time of peace and quietness. Some are suitable to our times of sadness, and others when we are joyful in the Lord. 6. When we draw near the time of the great feasts, good exercises should be renewed, and the prayers of holy men more fervently besought. We ought to make our resolutions from one feast to another, as if each were the period of our departure from this world, and of entering into the eternal feast. So ought we to prepare ourselves earnestly at solemn seasons, and the more solemnly to live, and to keep straightest watch upon each holy observance, as though we were soon to receive the reward of our labours at the hand of God. 7. And if this be deferred, 
let us believe ourselves to be as yet ill-prepared and unworthy as yet of the glory which shall be revealed in us at the appointed season, and let us study to prepare ourselves the better for our end. Blessed is that servant, as the evangelist Luke hath it, whom, when the Lord cometh, he shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, he will make him ruler over all that he hath.